Today, we're talking all about goals and the science of goal setting and achieving your goals. So does visualization work? There's a near doubling in the probability of reaching one's goal if you focus on the amygdala, that center of the brain that's involved in anxiety and fear and worry is one of the four core components of our goal setting and goal pursuit circuitry. So when we think about goal seeking and the pursuit of goals of any kind in the brain, it doesn't matter what the goal is. It involves a common set of neural circuits. One of the brain areas is the so-called amygdala. The amygdala is most often associated with fear. So you might say, wow, how is that involved in goal-directed behavior? Well, a lot of our goal-directed behavior is to avoid punishments including things like embarrassment or financial ruin or things of that sort. And so the amygdala and some sense of anxiety or fear is actually built in to the circuits that generate goal seeking and our motivation to pursue goals. The other areas are the so-called eventual striatum that helps us generate go, meaning the initiation of action and no go the prevention of action type scenarios. One circuit is involved in getting us to do things like I'm gonna get up tomorrow and I'm gonna run five miles first thing in the morning. Another circuit within the basal ganglia is a no-go circuit. It's the one that says, no, I'm not going to go for the second cookie or the third cookie. I'm not going to eat that. And then the go circuit would be the one that's responsible for instead eating something else. And then there is the so-called cortex. The cortex is the outer shell of the brain. And there are two subregions of the cortex that are involved in goal-directed behavior. One is the lateral prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is involved in so-called executive function, things like planning, thinking about things under different time scales. So not just what we want in the immediate term, but what we might want tomorrow or the next day and how our actions currently are going to relate to the future and the so-called orbitofrontal cortex. Orbitofrontal cortex has a large number of functions, but one of the key functions of the orbitofrontal cortex, it's involved in meshing some emotionality with our current state of progress and comparing that emotionality to where we, it might be when we are closer to a goal, okay? If we wanna make this even simpler, I'll just do this one more time. Think anxiety and fear, it's the amygdala. The second is involved in action, and in action, the other one is involved in planning and thinking across different time scales. So that's lateral prefrontal cortex. And then the fourth one is involved in emotionality, where we sit emotionally at present compared to where we think we will be emotionally when we reach some particular goal. And that's the orbitofrontal cortex. What is going on in these circuits can basically be boiled down to two particular things. The first is value information trying to understand whether or not something is really worth pursuing or not. The other component of this neural circuit is associated with action, which actions to take and which actions not to take given the value of a particular goal in a given moment's time. You're gonna hear me say over and over again in this episode, the value information about a goal is so key. Here's why. There is basically one neurotransmitter or rather neuromodulator system that governs our goal setting, goal assessment, and goal pursuit. And that is the neuromodulator dopamine. And as we do this, I'd like you to keep in mind, what are some things that you've either accomplished or that you'd like to accomplish going forward? Because as we do this, we can build toward a set of protocols that at the end, you'll be able to very quickly plug in your particular goals and a route to those particular goals that's grounded in the science that I think are going to be very effective in allowing you to reach those goals more quickly and with indeed less effort. In fact, let's start with a tool now. Moving toward any goal involves orienting our thinking towards the extra personal space. When people have to focus their attention on one location, like a goal line, they are much more effective in reaching those goals and they achieve them with the perception that they expended less effort. The process is very simple. You're going to focus your visual attention on one point beyond your peripersonal space. So it could be on your computer, it could be on the wall, it could be a horizon, it could be at a, at a distance. And you're gonna focus your visual attention there. And with some effort, you're gonna hold your visual attention for 30 to 60 seconds. You might blink, that's okay, but you're going to try and hold your visual attention there. So no moving your head around, um, no diverting your attention to other locations. It's a way to harness your attention and to remove distractors. Removing distractors and getting your 
body and brain into a mode of activation, getting that healthy increase in systolic blood pressure that puts you into forward motion towards your goals is absolutely key. Okay, we haven't yet talked about how to set goals and how to assess progress. This is simply how to pursue goals, okay? But the visual component is important. In fact, I would argue that the visual system and harnessing your visual attention to a narrow point is going to be the most effective way to get your brain and body into a mode of action to pursue whatever goal it is you're trying to pursue. So does visualization work? Well, turns out that visualization of the big win, the end goal, so the Super Bowl win or eight gold medals in the Olympics or graduation from the university of your choice or making a certain amount of money or finding the partner of your choice, et cetera. That visualization is effective in getting the goal pursuit process started, but it actually is a pretty lousy and maybe even counterproductive way of maintaining pursuit of that goal. In fact, there's a much better way to maintain ongoing action toward a goal that also involves visualization, but it turns out it's not about visualizing success. It's about visualizing failure. There's a near doubling in the probability of reaching one's goal if you focus routinely on foreshadowing failure. You think about the ways in which things could fail if you take action A or you take action B and instead, therefore, you take action C. If we think back to the neural circuit associated with assessing value in our goal pursuits, this makes perfect sense. The amygdala, that center of the brain that's involved in anxiety and fear and worry, well, the amygdala is one of the four core components of our goal setting and goal pursuit circuitry. The truth is you should be thinking mainly about how bad it's really going to get if you don't do it, how disappointing yourself you're gonna feel, how it will negatively impact you if not in the immediate term, in the long term, if indeed your goal is to reach your goal. And the more specific you can get, by writing down or thinking about or talking about how bad it will be if you don't achieve your goals, the more likely you are to achieve those goals. If you're going to visualize in a positive way, do that at the very beginning of some goal pursuit, maybe intermittently every once in a while. You imagine the big win of you know scoring perfect on an exam or winning the championship or the great relationship. But most of the time, if you wanna be effective, you should be focusing on avoiding failure and you should be really clear about what those failures would look like and feel like. Now let's talk about goal setting. The goal should be significant, we are told. It should be inspirational. It should be aggressive yet realistic. But what does that really look like? And what does that correspond to? And how do we actually make that happen? Turns out that the probability of achieving a goal goes up or down depending on whether or not one visualizes or sets a goal that is easy, moderate, or impossible. Turns out that if the goal is too easy, it's too within reach, it doesn't recruit enough of the autonomic nervous system to make pursuit of that goal likely. Also, if a goal was too lofty, if it was too far from their current abilities, it didn't recruit enough systolic blood pressure. Even if people could get very excited about something mentally, it simply didn't place their body into a state of readiness because they, it wasn't tangible that they could actually perhaps really achieve it. So it turns out that when goals were moderate, when they were just outside of one's immediate abilities or that one felt that, yeah, that would take a lot of effort, but it's within range or maybe in range, like maybe I can do it, maybe I can't, then there was a near doubling of the likelihood that they would engage in the ongoing pursuit of that particular goal. The goals need to be realistic and truly challenging. 